Welcome! In this video, we'll show you how to perform an outdoor installation of a Pacific KA band terminal. In this example, we will be using our standard sizing, which is a 1.2 meter antenna. We'll be showing you a ground installation of the antenna. You'll need a galvanized steel ground pole measuring 1.8 meters with an outer diameter of 76 millimeters with an allowance of plus or minus one millimeter. To ensure stability, make sure it is at least two millimeters thick. The pipe comes with a 25 centimeter steel crossbar, which will provide additional stability when it is placed underground. The 1.2 meter antenna is comprised of four components. First, the mast bracket will be fixed in the pole head to be used as a platform for the rest of the antenna. The flat piece on top of it will be placed horizontally to ensure azimuth precision during pointing. The second component is the azimuth and elevation mount structure. It allows the antenna fine pointing. It is fixed directly over the mast bracket. The third component is the feed support arm that maintains the transceiver at the right position from the reflector. The fourth and last component is the dish reflector. This is fixed on the feed support arm. The electronics of the KA band terminal is composed of the transceiver and the modem. The 3W transceiver is fixed at the end of the feed arm facing the reflector. It can be set manually in left-hand or right-hand circular polarization. The MDM2510 NewTek modem comes with its power supply and is connected to the transceiver by a coaxial cable. The distance between the modem and transceiver should not exceed 30 meters. Four F connectors are supplied to be mounted on the coaxial cable with stripping and compression tools. Let's begin. First, you'll need to find a suitable location. Here are three things to keep in mind. First, the dish must be able to see the satellite. Second, it must be mounted in a rigid way to avoid any missed pointing. Third, it must be less than 30 meters from the modem. While there are several ways to mount an antenna, such as non-penetrating, wall or roof mounting, Pacific recommends ground installation for better antenna stability. To find the right azimuth and elevation for the antenna, go to www.dishpointer.com and enter your location and the satellite orbital position. Pacific Satellite K1 is at 150 degrees east. There should not be any obstacles between the dish antenna and the satellite, such as buildings or trees. First, measure a 60 cm square in the ground. Mark the area with paint spray. Once the area is marked, dig a 1 meter deep hole. Prepare enough concrete to fill the hole. Carefully place the pole vertically into the ground. Ensure that it sits in the middle of the hole. You can now pour the concrete until it reaches the ground level. Make sure the pole is vertical by using a level before, during and after pouring the cement. Create a slope at the bottom of the pipe to allow for water to drain. You can now use wood support to stabilize the pole while the concrete dries. If necessary, cover the site to protect it from rain. Check the verticality of the pipe again once the cement has dried. Place the brackets on top of the pole and tighten it with the four bolts. You can now place the flat piece on top of it as indicated. Place the mount on top of the platform correctly oriented 
so that you can see the fine azimuth adjuster fixation hole. Gently tighten the mount with the four bolts. Place the fine azimuth adjuster and screw it into the mount. From here, you'll be able to adjust the elevation. Loosen the two lateral nuts to allow the mobile piece to slide as you turn the bolt located at the back of the mount. Once you've reached the required angle, tighten the bolts again. We are now going to place the feed support and reflector. Slide the support into the bolt and align the four holes to place the other bolts into. Then, tighten the support to the mount. Unfold the arm and block it with the two screws to insert at its base on both sides. Place the dish on top of the support and align the holes to fix the six flat head bolts into. Then, tighten to secure it in place. This part is dedicated to the installation of the coaxial cable termination. It allows us to connect the transceiver to the modem. Clip the stripping tool around 1 cm from the cable ends. To cut through the different layers of the cable, rotate the tool 12 times. Peel back the end to reveal the cable's metallic shield and the central core. Make sure the core is straight. Insert the cable into the connector until it can go no further. For a better fit, give it a gentle turn. Once the connector is placed, use the compression tool to seal the connector with the cable. We are now going to set and connect the transceiver to the rest of the system. You will find the feed horn polarization on the letter located at the base of its collar. A for RHCP received from satellite. B for LHCP received from satellite. Change the polarization if necessary. Use the 2.5mm Allen key for the four external screws and 3mm Allen key for the four internal ones. Place the transceiver as shown and tighten it to the feed support arm. Connect the transceiver's RX and TX port to the coaxial cable. To prevent cables from moving freely, attach them with plastic cable ties along the feed support arm and the rest of the structure. Ensure that the coaxial cables only follow smooth curves in order not to damage its core. Seal the connectors with rubber splicing tape to ensure it is waterproof. Connect the ground cable from the transceiver to the small screw made for that purpose on the feed support arm structure. It is located behind the reflector. The cable extremity must be connected to the earth of the site. Now, the installation of the outdoor components of the KA band terminal is complete. The coaxial cable from the antenna to the indoor modem must be protected within a plastic pipe or cable tray. The modem will be installed in an equipment room and connected to the cable.